Hi. Welcome to the bathtub. This is Scott Bradfield. Um, and actually, Lucky, Lucky, you want to come say hi? No? I don't think Lucky's on the floor here. She's exhausted. She's had a hard day chasing a, chasing a rubber toy around the house. So uh, she's, she's exhausted. She's had a tough life. And uh, it's, it's a non noir edition with Lucky Bright. You want to say hi? She doesn't she want to, that's the laziest dog I've ever seen in my life. She doesn't want to go for walks. She doesn't want to get up. She just wants to play with a chew toy. Um, so, uh, we're talking today about, uh, we're doing one of our nay and yay things, which is a specious contrast. I, I should call this the specious contrast uh, episode. I, I have a specious comparison episode where I say, if you like so-and-so, you might like another person, which I thought was a good idea so that if you like, again, if you like Ian McHugh, and then you might see these other writers you, you don't know. My stomach is making noise. That's not the dog. And... Um, and this is the no and yay. So the, the no this week is uh, Henry James. And again, I'm not trying to piss off all you Henry James lovers. And, and those of you who love to take Henry James in the bathtub, God, God save all of you and God help you all. And, I, and good luck to you all. I'm, I'm good, good, have a great life. And, and, and uh, uh, many of my friends love Henry James. You know, uh, The Golden Bowl. I hated all these books. The American. I think I've read half of it about 12 times. Um, and um, uh, I've never been a big Henry James fan. Some of the earlier stuff was I liked because it was shorter. I'm not a Henry James fan. Um, I have one one other thing I don't like about Henry James, which is that whenever people teach Henry James, they teach the notion of the omniscient narrator. And all I've been teaching creative writer for years. All my worst students think they're using the omniscient narrator technique from Henry James. They have no idea what they're talking about. And every time some student, every every term, I get two, three people. I'm, I'm doing an omniscient narrator. I just my whole, I just think well, there's nothing I can do. I can't help them. I can't do anything. Uh, uh, omniscient narrator. I don't know if if this is omniscient or not. I don't care. But if you like Henry James, that's wonderful. What's interesting about Henry James are those kind of long experiential paragraphs where we're kind of in their heads and we're hearing all the stuff they're thinking and we're seeing all this sort of stuff and we're getting all this conjecture and then there's this kind of authorial presence kind of adding conjecture and I, I don't know what's going on in Henry James but they're kind of long kind of uh, uh, endless paragraphs to me and uh, I, I thought of him when I was think, thinking about another writer who I really sort of re sort of discovered in a way uh, in the past few weeks, because I did a piece about the great Jean Stafford, a woman who was born in California and then went east. Had uh, I, did, I did a little piece. I don't know if I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to the piece if it comes out this week uh, for the LA Times about her. I knew her short stories, and many of you may know Jean Stafford's short stories. She's never had the reputation that she sort of deserves. She's sort of the closest I can think of. She reminds me a lot of John Cheever who should really be in the All Bathtub Hall of Fame, as far as I'm concerned. And I would say that she's as good. That's saying quite a lot, as far as a short story writer. Her stories have the same kind of surprising and unusual quality that Cheever has. And she gets in the minds of some strange characters, one after another. And they're, they're, uh, they're very rich stories. And... Always good. I've never read a bad Gene Stafford short story. And it's been a long time since I've read the stories. Um, but if you haven't read short stories of Stafford, you should. And then it brings me to the reason I was I want to talk a little bit about her today is the Library of America has brought out the three novels. So I didn't even really it never really kind of registered to me that she had written novels, and I sort of kind of dismissed them as we unfairly do, because there's so many damn books out there. I dismissed them as, oh, I've never heard of them. They probably aren't as good as the stories. You know, there are some, most writers are good story writers or good novelists. And rarely, Richard Yates last, we talked about last, did both exceptionally well. And Cheever, for example, his novels, I never finished most of his novels. I find them a little boring. And the other stories are wonderful. Um... So I didn't. I sort of dismissed it without having read them. They came out in this new Library of America edition, which is these lovely books, which I like for some reasons, but they're very hard to turn the pages. I think I mentioned this in the Elizabeth Bishop book. It's very hard to find the find the pages. But um, all three of her novels have been reissued, and I re I read them for the first time as a complete novice in the novels, and they're really really good. Uh, they remind me a lot of Henry James, but much better. 
they do similar things in which we kind of are with this character uh, who, who she really, who she clearly learned from more than James. And I think she was a fan of Henry James. Was Proust. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But I think it's Proust. Anyway, I've never read Proust uh, through very far. I've read the first book, which I did enjoy of that series. I read Swansbury, and I keep wanting to take him into the bathtub eventually. And that she has this thing of where she does kind of characters who are from fairly modest backgrounds. So the narrator of, for example, her first and best, most successful novel, A Boston Adventure, is basically a girl who's from a poor family out in the suburbs of Boston. Her father's a shoemaker. Her mother is a kind of a beautiful Russian immigrant immigrant who is crazy, who's going and who goes incre increasingly crazy throughout the book. And you'd think that these are these are people who Jean Stafford was not this wasn't these they didn't reflect her personal life. She was a middle class girl. She went went east. She married Robert Lowell and I guess barely survived that marriage. He almost killed her in a car crash and then drove her crazy otherwise. And then she had a bad second marriage. She had a she went through fairly middle class east coast upper middle class uh marriages, had a fairly successful marriage at the end of her life or, or third marriage was fairly successful, but she was not a working class girl in Boston. She she writes it from this point of view of this girl, and yet she gives the girl. I like I love it when people do this. Faulkner does this, and Novikov does this. She gives the girl the the richness of a language that she can express herself in. So the girl speaks in these very eloquent, rich paragraphs. And unlike um, James, and who else? Did I come? She she's incredibly funny. It, it, they're, they're very funny stories. Um, I, don't, I was going to read a passage, but I don't, it's, it's almost hard to, it's hard to pick a passage from this book. I would say every paragraph is wonderful in the Boston Adventure. And the premise is that this girl comes from this horrible background, this horrible family. Um, her mother's going crazy. She, ha she wants to be this middle class old woman. There's a kind of a wealthy old woman named Miss Pride who comes to the hotel where she works. And Miss Pride is this really snooty, uh, 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 cold uh, woman who's who comes from a very wealthy background, who's who believes everything is is vulgar around her, and 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 she comes from a refined background, and this young girl wants to be her, which is <coughs> understandable and horrifying. At one point, at one point, the uh, just to give you a full taste, the the girl has a her, her mother has a, a son. Another son, just before the father takes off, and she goes crazy when the son is born. She hates the child and treats the child really badly in some of the most funny, really black humor. But it, you can't stop laughing. Parts of it are such black. They're really Nathaniel West type black humor. And this little kid dies in this horrible way. And the um, the family's falling apart. And the the narrator of the Boston Adventure tell lets Miss Pride know about this, this kind of wealthy old dowd, old woman. And the old woman says, Oh, it's you're having such a terrible life. I'm gonna give you a present. And she gives her a subscription to Atlantic Monthly. <laughs> I swear to God, I mean, the woman has no connection to human life at all. And this girl likes this old woman because she has no connection to the life that she lives. It's like a nicer place. So anyway, I really reckon, I thought Boston Adventure was a wonderful novel. The second novel is The Mountain Lion. And that is goes back to California and this this farm that, that uh, Stafford was raised on. And it's about a boy and a girl who both have dreams of kind of better lives than they live. And it's again, it's very eloquent. It's, it's, it's beautifully written. It's funny and it's very dark. So funny and dark are really the two words to go with her. And the Catherine Wheel kind of does the same thing. It's young young people, young people trying to grow up. And uh, I don't want to say much more than that, except that if you if you do like James, or if you don't like James, there are Jamesian qualities to Stafford that you might appreciate more or as much as Henry James. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, a, a lovely book. I would certainly recommend A Boston Adventure. And if you're interested in California novels, The Mountain Lion for sure. But uh, for, for an, an undiscovered, this is a classic novel. It should be. Everyone should know about The Boston Adventure. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you next week in the bathtub.
or from the bathtub or in the bathtub while you're nearby the bathtub. Happy, happy bathing. Bye.